there is the inner and the outer and the mind as something separate as being the past. So there are three things now, the inner, the outer and the mind as the past. That's right, sir? No, do, please, sir, don't laugh. This is our life, this is what we are doing. Only you may put the question differently, verbalize it in a different way. But this is actually what's going on in our daily life. You want to do something. The mind says, don't do it. Do it some other way. So there's a battle going on. The mind is interfering. The mind is the thought. Thought being the past. Thought says, thought comes in between the actual, the inner and the outer. And so what is one to do? Right, sir? What is one to do? Thought interferes all the time, comes in between. Thought itself has divided the outer and the inner. Right? You're following this? It's the function of the thought is to divide, isn't it? Thought is the past. And so there is the past, the present and the future. Thought has divided life as the past, the present and the future. So thought has divided the inner and the outer. Thought says, how can I bridge the two and act as a whole? Right, sir? Can thought do this? Because the thought itself is their factor of division. Where there is a will, there is a way. No, sir. You have your way. You have your way in the world. You have your will to destroy people. And you have succeeded. You have found the way. We are not concerned with will. Will is the most destructive thing, for will is based on pleasure, desire, and not on free joy. We won't go into that for the moment. So you are saying, thought interferes. Thought interferes and divides. So you are asking how thought can be silenced, kept quiet. Is it it, sir? No, wait a minute, sir. Let me finish this question. How can thought be silenced? Is that the right question? Because if you put the wrong question, you will invariably get the wrong answer. No, no, please, sir, this, is, this isn't a laughing matter. You must put the right question. We're going to put the right question. Is it, is it the right question to say, how can thought end? Or find out what is the function of thought? If 
you put an end to thought, if that is at all possible, then when will you, how will you operate when you want to go home? When you have got to go to the office tomorrow? Thought apparently is necessary. So you are saying, thought is dangerous in a certain direction, because it divides, and yet thought must function logically, sanely, objectively, healthily, in another direction. So how is this possible? How can thought not interfere? And yet, thought must function. You see the problem? Not how to end thought. So, when you have put the question very clearly, that is, well, let's go into it again, you will see it for yourself. To put the question very clearly, which is, thought which is the result of the, which is the response of the past, interferes. Thought divides as the outer and the inner. And thought destroys unity. So we say, let us destroy thought. Let us kill the mind. And how to do it is a totally wrong question. But if you inquired into the whole structure of thought, see what its place is, where it is not necessary, then you, are, you will find out this mind that is intelligent that will operate intelligently when thought doesn't function and when thought must function. Am I answering the question, sir? Good. Yes, sir. Why is it that you have a greater awareness of what is than I do? What is your secret? <laughs> Why is it, the question asks, that you have a greater awareness of what is than I have? I never thought about it, really. Wait a minute, sir, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm finished. I've really never thought about it. Now, just look. Is humility something to be cultivated? And if you cultivate humility, it is still vanity. If you cultivate the awareness of what is, you're not being aware. But if you are aware, you know, you sit in a bus or driving a car, when you look and talk, when you go and enjoy yourself on the beach or climb the hills, when you go and sit in a cinema, watch yourself. Just watch. And out of that, naturally, easily comes of the awareness of what is. But if you try to cultivate and pay a great deal of attention to what is, thought is operating, not awareness. Got it? Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, sir. We have no teachers. What, sir? Did I understand you correctly? What? To be free, we should have no teachers. To be free? To be free, we should have no teachers. Is that what you say? <clears throat> to be free, we should have no teachers. Is that what you said? To be free implies to have no teachers? I'm asking you what you have said. To be free, we should have no teachers. Sir. 
be free. Yes. Now, just look. What is the function of a teacher? If he knows some technological subject, medicine, geography, how to run a computer, and so on, science, and so on, his function is to instruct another about the knowledge and the information he has. Right? That's fairly simple. Now, we are talking about something in which, when the teacher says he knows and wants to instruct the disciple, then be terribly suspicious. Because the man who says he knows does not know. Right? Because truth, that's beauty of that enlightenment, what you will call it, cannot ever be said, it is. It's a living thing, it's a moving thing, it's active, it's vital. It's only the dead thing you can say it is. And a teacher who teaches you about dead things is not a teacher. You know, somehow, I can't, I'm not deaf, but I can't hear this. Attention and discipline? Yes, sir. How do you put it together? Yes, right. The word discipline means to learn. Learn from another. The disciple means one who learns from the teacher, from the guru. Now, what is learning? Have you ever considered or gone into that question of what is learning? Learning, the active present of that word, verb to learn. The active present, what does that word learning mean? Now, either you are learning to add to what already you know, which becomes knowledge, you follow it? Like science, is the accumulation of knowledge. And, or, learning is not an accumulation of knowledge, but learning, a movement. Do you see the difference between the two? I either learn in order to acquire knowledge, to be efficient technologically and so on, learn, 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 or I'm learning all the time, which is always new, and therefore action always new. Now, Look at this for a minute. I want to know about myself. I want to learn about myself. Please listen to this. Once you understand this, you will do, 
it will be quite different, you will see. <coughs> I want to learn about myself. I am a very clump, complex entity. There is both the hidden and the obvious. I want to learn the whole totality about myself, know myself, learn about myself. So I watch myself, and I am afraid. I see I am afraid. I see the cause of that fear. And in watching I have learned. And I have learned, and that has become my knowledge. Now, next time fear arises, please listen to this carefully, next time fear arises, I look at it with the previous knowledge, right? Therefore, I am stopped learning. I am only looking at it with the past, and therefore not learning about what actually is going on. You understand that? So I am to learn about myself, there must be freedom of constant observation without the past interfering, which is thought interfering. So learning has two meanings, learning to acquire knowledge with which I can operate most efficiently in certain f fields. And also learning implies learning about oneself so that the past doesn't interfere all the time, which is thought, so I can observe. You, huh? you have seen this, sir? Uh, just a minute, have you seen this? So the mind is always learning. So the mind is always sensitive. So that the past as thought doesn't interfere. If you, if you haven't understood it, I can't explain it anymore. Sorry. I'd like to ask you if you eat meat or fish. Are you a vegetarian? <laughs> Do you eat meat or fish? Does it really interest you? <laughs> All right. All my life I've never touched meat or fish. I don't know what it tastes like. Not good. I never tasted it. I've been brought up when I, uh, doesn't matter, in the Europe, but I've never tasted it. I know what it, never smoked or never drank. I doesn't appear, I, it's no meaning to me. Will that make you also vegetarian? <laughs> it won't, it won't. Just me, sir, let me finish. You know, heroes, Examples are the worst things you can do, have. Find out why you eat meat, why you indulge in smoking and drinking and all the rest of it, why one cannot lead a simple life. A simple life doesn't mean one cloth, one suit or one meal a day. The quality of the mind that is simple so that you can look directly with all the distortions of pleasure and desire and ambitions, motives, so that it can look and perceive the beauty of the world. <laughs> I've got a question. Yes, sir. I just want to ask what humor is. What? Humor. He wants to ask what humor is. I really don't know. I suppose really, 
to laugh at oneself if you can. Because we have so much tears in our heart, so much misery to look at ourselves with, hum with, with a laughter, to observe with clarity, seriousness and with laughter. That's enough thirst, I think it's time to stop.